just generally EMC has a history of, uh, uh, you know, of looking out at, at innovative technology companies uh, because, you know, just the time frame that you have to deal with, you know, time to market is so crucial that uh, especially for very advanced technologies like the, the kind that uh, both RSA and network intelligence bring to the table, it was very, very clear that we had to buy, that to try to build, you know, something of the scope of, of RSA would have been impossible. So by acquiring those sorts of technologies and focus, having the engineering effort focus really on integration, connecting those technologies into EMC, it's, it's far more effective to actually, you know, deploy it, get it to customers. In some All about integration, and that's really the focus of, of my job is to make sure that integration is successful. We take all the technologies, all the building block security technologies from RSA, from network intelligence, now from, from Valid, and make sure that we can stitch them together. Um, as uh, uh, Art was mentioning before, this notion of a common security platform is our overall strategy. It's a service-oriented architecture that then plugs into the, the rest of what EMC is building. And so that's really how we can deploy security services uh, for, for all of EMC products. So that's really where all the, you know, a huge amount of the engineering effort is, is you know, making that platform, you know, possible. Uh, typically today VMware works at arm's length. It just makes sense in terms of what they offer. They have to have that independence. Whereas again, since the primary motivation for RSA was back to having EMC products use, you know, and integrate security, we just can't operate that independently. So absolutely we sell products outside of the EMC product line, of course, and that will continue. But, but again, we have to work very closely with all the EMC product lines to, to make sure we get them secured. So very, very tight working relationship. So that's, a, that's always a challenge because uh, you know, one of the important rationale behind the acquisition is to make sure we didn't do any harm to, to RSA's core business in terms of you know, providing security to that customer base. And that continues to be the case. And again, Art talked about that, having you know, uh, you know, a couple banner quarters in terms of being able to successfully get our products out there. So it's always a challenge. How do you balance and not destroy the business you have, but all the resources required to, again, to essentially RSA now has a whole new set of internal customers to deliver. Um, what are some of the te uh, techniques? I mean, some of it is, is, is you know, having a group like uh, like we have within uh, the RSA office of the CTO that focuses a lot on these integration activities. So we have you know dedicated architectural staff to work on this. Uh, another is just having um, you know a dedicated engineer. So we have we've actually funded additional staff over and above the existing RSA product lines to make sure that's successful. And also on the EMC side, there's a, there's actually a product security office on the EMC side that serves to collect requirements and and do product management. So we've actually have quite a Quite a, a number of different, you know, mechanisms and, and people working to to make sure we can do that integration and not break, you know, right. the existing right. products. I mean, we start with uh, securing the people, you know, the identity so and access the management, and well, but not just tokens, right? Because it's now, as as I was describing, the broad set of, of authentication offerings. So especially when we get into things like, uh, you know, the consumer-based offerings and risk-based authentication. So handling the entire spectrum of offerings whether it's token based, you know, going, getting into the, the smart card area and all the different token form factors, hard and soft tokens, you know, up to consumer based authentication. So that's, that's one area of the business. Um, and, you know, not to mention then closely related in the identity and access management space, you know, web single sign on and authorization as we described. Another very important area is around federation and our federated identity management product that since a lot of the security that, that we provide has to interoperate across lines of business and across corporate boundaries. So that's important. So that's one set of products around identity and, and access management. Um, then, then we get into the, the cryptographic space, our, our history there around our, our B-safe crypto libraries, but really, again, the focus there around key management, you know, the RSA key manager product that's now deployed. Uh, and uh, as you heard, uh, just expanding the use of key management across the entire enterprise. So really working towards being that global centralized key management, useful for things like database encryption, just to, again, via the, the new acquisition, as well as, of course, storage encryption as we integrate with the MC products. So, and lots of other things, mobile and, you know. And PKI, is that part of that or is that? So far, at the moment, it's actually distinct. RSA Key Manager focuses today on symmetric key encryption, but we also have a key PKI product for, for 
you know, asymmetric. And so it's natural over time to see those coming together and having key management that covers both of those. Mm -hmm. And then finally, you know, let's see if I make sure I get them all, uh, the, the network intelligence offering, the security information and event management space so around compliance, audit logging, collecting logs, alerting, uh, forensics, and, you know, reporting uh, compliance. Uh, so very, very broad set of products that uh, I think are, you know, very effective working together. From EMC's perspective, um, it's the major platform vendor, so the major partners for uh, for EMC in this area are you know, Microsoft, Cisco, Oracle in particular, and making sure that the security services that we provide as a major platform vendor work and interoperate in a coherent way, in a seamless way for customers is, is crucial there. So absolutely su supporting the appropriate standards in that space around authentication, having that work very effectively on the desktop as well as with our other partners is is extremely important. As far as I know, there's very little that we provide in terms of, of open source today. Um, for example, around, you know, be safe. I mean, the primary focus there is for enterprises that need, um, you know, typical enterprise strength crypto algorithms. And of course, be safe is used very extensively. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the future, though, we're, we're having a lot of discussions about open source, especially since we focus a lot on policy servers, the infrastructure to define all these different kinds of policies that I, I was just talking about for authentication and access control, and compliance and cryptography. So since a lot of our focus is on the server infrastructure, uh, we're very motivated to encourage the adoption and use of those services. So getting it out there in the client space, having agents there that, that can use it. So to that extent, you know, we're looking at creative ways to encourage you know, potentially via open source to encourage the use of our, our you know, server side infrastructure. So I think you'll we'll see more in that space. We're, we're having just those discussions. A year ago, that was really my job to take that concept, sounds good, secure the information, not the perimeter, and what did that mean in terms of actually how do you build it? What does that mean uh, you know, in reality? And, and uh, in my view, what that means is that the technologies that you use to enforce information-centric security, to ensure that policies are enforced wherever that, that information travels, those technologies are very different than perimeter-centric security technologies. Perimeter-centric security, you know, those are things like, you know, firewalls and malware detection, intrusion detection. Those work, you know, effectively as a first level of defense at the perimeter. But information-centric security has to do with policies directly on, you know, defining access of people directly to that data. So what that means in terms of underlying policies and, and security servers that work to enforce information-centric security, it's really very closely aligned to the, the products, RSA products I just described. So number one, you need, need identity and access management because you have to authenticate those users. You've got, you got to have that. Um, you've got to have uh, key management, right, because cryptography is a very uh, fundamental mechanism to control that information and making sure that policies are enforced even when that information goes outside of your control. And then right back to compliance, the security information and event management, because that's again all about uh, enforcing security on the information itself. So those are really those underlying building blocks that make that concept, information-centric security, make that possible to, to actually work. Space. We view that the perimeter-centric, uh, you know, Technologies that's uh, we'll, we'll work with other companies and make sure that those those technologies uh, play nicely with what we're providing you know, around it, securing information. Great.